My name's Stuart Primrose. I'm a qualified arborist and owner of Modern Arbor Professional Tree Services. This is a giant white gum, Eucalyptus viminalis. It's the seventh largest tree species on earth. The reason we're here today is to inspect this tree particularly because it seems to be showing signs of what's called ginger tree syndrome. Ginger tree syndrome gets its name from the discoloured bark. You know, the, the discoloration is a result of the tree exuding keno. Keno is produced as a, a defence mechanism. Um, as an insect breaks through the bark of the tree, the keno floods the hole and it floods the insect effectively, trapping the insect and sealing the hole off. So from a quick inspection around the base of the tree, we've seen signs of various pests. So that's the frass from wood boring insects. That is frass all over it, sawdust essentially. We've also seen leaf feeding insects such as a gum leaf skeletonizer, Euroba lugans, which is attracted to the amino acids present in the, in the eucalyptus leaves, particularly present in drought stress trees. The other pests we've seen are jewel beetles, and there's evidence to other leaf feeding insects and sap feeding insects as well. Basically, the theory is that during a period of extended high temperatures in 2013, the trees have actually shrunk, which is disrupting the vascular system of the tree. You can see in this tree the bark has actually peeled away as the wood has shrunk and that part of the tree has died. So we're going to climb a tree today and, and carry out an aerial inspection and just have a closer look and just see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So at the moment we're about 50 metres up one of the giant white gums in the Evercreech Forest Reserve. Uh, we've stopped here basically because this is where the extent of the bleeding stops. Um, we're just having a bit of a close look at the trunk and just trying to see if we can see any obvious reasons as to what's going on. And already I've seen some really small larvae uh, present in some of these wounds where it's weeping the keno. So what we've seen in this reserve is a, a multi-pronged attack. So we see evidence of the ginger tree syndrome, which has been linked to a, a warming climate. Uh, we've seen insect attack and prolonged insect attack by le um, gum leaf skeletonizers, which seem to have had a couple of generations this season and to be particularly widespread in the north of the state. Uh, we've seen wood bore damage from wood boring insects and there's obviously drought stress with evidence of this within these trees in this particular area. The insect attack that Stu has really looked at here in, these, in the White Nights is a big problem and unfortunately we're seeing a very similar situation occur across the northern part of Tasmania. So we've had a lot of white gums struggling with what we've been calling ginger syndrome, a lot of trees dying on quite a large scale, and which is really quite worrying. So part of the climate change that we're seeing is uh, an increase in extreme events. And there was an extreme heat event in the northern parts of Tasmania in 2013, where after quite a long hot summer, there was about over a week worth of 29 degrees in March, which is a really unusual heat event. And that, we think, has added to the stress on the trees and caused, caused the damage to their cells and caused this, this ginger syndrome to kick in at that particular time. So ginger syndrome has been linked to high temperature events. The trees use their leaves to suck water up from their roots up through the tree. And so as it becomes very hot, they're trying really, really hard to suck that water up. And the cells inside the trees are collapsing and actually damaging the cells. Because those cells are damaged, the tree itself is trying to um, repair themselves by oozing out this what we call keno, which is like a, an iron-coloured, gingery-coloured substance. It's trying to heal the damage of those cells. But the problem is when it's so hot and the whole tree has been damaged, so much energy goes into trying to heal these things that the whole tree sort of can't deal with it. And dies. It's almost like your human immune system when it becomes attacked by a whole range of different things you then tend to sort of collapse and become sick. These trees are really going through multiple stresses from heat and from drought and from a changing climate which then enables insects to come in and start attacking them. So it's a very broad scale problem when all these trees start getting attacked by the insects. Well, as the trees are dying off, they're also becoming more and more dead wood. So there's this feedback effect as, as there's more dead wood in the tree, there's more space for the beetles and the other insects to um, find a home in that particular tree. And from each one of those trees, they can go out and find some more. So it kind of is a snowballing effect. The more the trees decline, the more dead wood there is, the more space there is for beetles to attack. 
My first visit to the Evercreech Forest Reserve to see the White Knights was maybe 2002, and they were pretty strong, healthy looking trees there. There's only one place in the world where we find Eucalyptus viminalis to this scale, to this extent, where they're such monsters and just fantastically sized. So really it's a bit confronting to see this change has happened in a pretty short time. The uh, elephant in the room, of course, is climate change. I feel that giant trees are a national treasure and a real asset to Australia and to the world. It's difficult to predict what the forest makeup is going to be like in, you know, 50, 60 years, but once these trees are gone, it's really unlikely that they're going to come back due to the effects of climate change, a warming climate and an increase in fire frequency particularly. You know, it's a big, broad-scale issue that goes beyond just little local problems. Um, and to me, that climate change is you know, a big, broad-scale problem that is part of the whole scenario of the downfall of this species.